A windstorm, an event, strong gusts traveling through the sky, over land and water, conjuring waves, throwing debris and smashing the shoreline, trees broken and tossed to the ground. A storm can bring destruction, but it can also bring change and renewal. My grandmother taught me that when a chief or a high person passes away, there's going to be a windstorm. This was a lesson that became very real for me, part of an event that helped change my life. I am Jepkemi Siam, one of 16 hereditary chiefs of the Squamish Nation. I am grateful to have learned so much about my culture, our customs, and spirituality from my parents, my grandmother, Kwaitlot, and many elders who generously shared their knowledge. They were the torchbearers. I'm also a teacher and a student, passing on knowledge, mentoring the next generations, and teaching is a tradition in my family that goes back centuries. In 1981, following a heavy rainstorm, a bridge was swept away along the Sea to Sky Highway, killing nine people, including my mother, my father, my sister, and my son. My sisters and I hung on for dear life. After that tragedy, our community, but especially our grandmother, stepped in, sharing our Squamish teachings to help carry us through this tragedy. Embracing our culture saved our lives. It was a crucial time in my life. I was 23 years old. I could have gone down a totally different path. But one of the main reasons I am who I am today is the support of my grandmother and the teachings of my people. This is the foundation that gives us strength. Instead of letting the tragedy destroy us, we learned it could be a source of strength and a way to help others. My grandmother taught us that when you've lost loved ones, you're closest to the creator. So you're the most powerful you're gonna ever be in your life. She pulled me and my sisters aside and said, you need to work to be the kindest people you can be. Since right now, you're so powerful, you're closest to the creator, you're so powerful and it would be easy for you to hurt people. She also told us, you have to give up something that's unwholesome for you for a year, and you will never have a problem with that for the rest of your life. I'm so grateful to my grandmother for providing foundational teachings for us to stand on. In 2003, my husband and I learned the traditional weaving of my people. At that time, there was only one weaver in the Squamish nation. Learning to weave and the experience that followed truly changed me. We were determined to teach as many people as we could to ensure that weaving would never slip into history. We taught weaving in Squamish nation first and through Moccasin Telegraph which you might know as word of mouth, we would be invited to teach in other communities, meeting many, many wonderful elders. That same year, the 2010 Olympics were awarded to Vancouver and Whistler. Along with our students, we wove regalia for the Squamish people to wear at the opening ceremonies. Squamish and Litwat were awarded a legacy 
becoming the Squamish and Leetwak Cultural Center in Whistler. I was there for the land blessing to completion. I was on the committee to design the building from the ground and co-curated the exhibits in the Leetwak, with the Leetwak curator. We received a grant from a bank and decided to create a weaving apprenticeship program. We called in 10 of our students to help design their weavings. We worked with them for six months, day and night, creating 11 monumental weavings that would be exhibited at the Squamish and Leetwak Cultural Center. In 2005, I was chosen to do an internship at the National Museum in Gatineau, Quebec. While there, I discovered the museum had the remains of two ancestors. These remains were taken from Kwai Hui, also known as Stanley Park in Vancouver. From time immemorial, Kwai Hui was our largest village. These ancestral remains were between four and 8,000 years old, a man and a woman. And we knew they were high people, chief people, because their foreheads were slanted by a practice of um, traditional head binding. I notified my leaders about these ancestors. Squamish Nation said, bring them home. This required a repatriation process that would take six months to navigate. Since this was the first repatriation the Squam for Squamish Nation, we consulted with our elders and they decided we want to do every ceremony that the Squamish Nation has, including cultural mask, shaker, and other prayer services, a viewing, and interment. We traveled with a delegation to Quebec, including our spiritual leader, elders, and youth. We had weavings made for the ancestors, wrapping the remains and conducting a spiritual ceremony. Our flight back to the West Coast left early in the morning. The museum wouldn't be open yet, so I ended up in the hotel room with my ancestors overnight. Before I went to bed, I told them, I'm honored to be here with you. If you have anything to say to me, please give me the message now before I go to sleep. The next day, I carried them through the airport. And of course, I got second looks as the boxes were being x-rayed. We arrived at the airport in Vancouver and had a police escort waiting for us. We requested to bring the ancestors home to Huai Hui. It was a life-changing moment. I was taking care of my ancestors the same ancestors who thousands of years ago took care of the land, my people, and in doing so, took care of me. It was so powerful and beautiful, a feeling I will never, ever forget. We brought the ancestors to the Elder Center on Capilano Reserve so our people could pay their respects. My grandma was 96 at that time, and she came to see and honor those ancestors. We had a prayer service and a viewing. Granny asked me to join her to go and view the ancestors. Standing there with my grandmother's, with her arm in mine, I felt smaller than a speck of sand looking at those ancestors that were four to 8,000 years old and they were here hundreds of generations ago. The love I felt from them, those ancestors, was the same love that I felt from my grandmother. The next day, another prayer service 
and viewing in the upper Squamish territory for Squamish members that couldn't travel to North Vancouver. On the third day, the ancestors were to be interred. There was an unexpected snowstorm and it was so heavy that it closed down the Sea to Sky Highway. So if you weren't in Squamish the night before, you couldn't be there for the last ceremony. The ceremony in the snow was magical. It was so quiet. And the eagle and a raven came and they circled above as we laid those ancestors to rest. They were home. After the ceremonies in December 2006, a historic windstorm ripped through Stanley Park. It knocked down thousands of trees. The storm affected 41 hectares of Stanley Park, causing extens extensive damage. Kwaihwe was one of the most affected areas. At the, at the time, it was reported in the media and viewed as a tragedy. Stanley Park had been badly damaged and part of it had been destroyed. Many of us only see a windstorm as destructive, nature's wrath, something to hunker down from and wait to blow over. But what if a windstorm also holds an important meaning? What if it teaches us something? What if from that destruction comes renewal? The windstorm was a renewal, not just destruction. The presence of my ancestors was reasserted, a balance restored. That experience and reviving our weaving changed me. Bringing the ancestors and the weaving back to my people was so important to me. This weaving, tells the story of my ancestors' journey and the windstorm. The red ochre color columns represent the ancestors. The trees on the top, they're green triangles, represent the tr fallen trees in Kwai Hui. The white going across represents the snowstorm that happened in Squamish. The yellow represents the storm as well. And the white represents the wind blowing across. My grandmother gave me the teachings that came along with the weavings. I don't want anybody to forget this story. I worry there's not enough time to pass along this history and knowledge to my child and grandchildren. These stories are more than just stories. This is our history, our culture and teachings. To pass them on to our children is so important. There are people who still Thank me for bringing our ancestors home. It is really special to me. As a relatively new chief, I had to find ways to contribute. A chief is someone who is a servant of the people, represents their family and people when needed. I feel like I've had the privilege an honor to do that. That time was a time of huge growth for me. I learned how it felt to contribute to my people. It changed my life. Truly, the best way to learn 
is to teach. I learned so much by teaching, by mentoring, by honoring my people.